In a previous video, I showed you how I made a 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery using these 32700 cells that I tested in another video. The 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery was made to replace a sealed lead acid battery for my spotlight. In that video, the cells were soldered in series because my battery spot welder was broken. I'm making another 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery pack, but this time I'll be using this compact 1S battery spot welder that you see right here. This spot welder is more than satisfactory for spot welding these 32700 cells, 18650s, or even 21700s. To get started, let's take a closer look at the spot welder, everything that's included, then I'll open it up quick so you can take a look at the inside, and then I'm going to give you a few demonstrations. Now the battery spot welder that I have that broke was the type that sat on the desk and you would hold the cell up against the probes to perform the spot weld. This one here, you hold the probes in your hand, which I'll show you in a minute when I open this up, and you press it against the nickel strip, which you see right here, in order to make the spot weld. As you can see, it's very small, the extruded aluminum housing. I can cover it up with my hand, and right over here, you have an on-off button. You push it and hold it. Let me do that right now so you can see it. Push and hold for two seconds. And you can see all these LEDs illuminated. This is giving you the state of charge for the lithium polymer cells that are inside. Inside this unit, if you take a look right over here, you can see that there are two large lithium polymer cells in parallel. And that's what gives you the amount of current that's required in order to perform the spot weld. If you don't care about having a nice extruded aluminum housing, then what you can also do is you can purchase just the control board that you saw along with the probes and you can use your own lithium iron phosphate cell that's high capacity or a lithium polymer cell. Just make sure the capacity is high enough that you can perform the spot welding operation. The cost will be lower if you just buy the board and use your own battery but a lot of people like the idea of just popping this in their bag with the probes and they can just take it out when they need it and not have to worry about connecting up an external cell for the power supply. So right here you can see those four LEDs are on. If the battery was only three quarters charged, you would see three. One quarter charged, you would see one. Now if I push this button right over here, fast twice, you can see there's four red LEDs. This is an indication that the setting for the spot welder is on the highest current setting. If you want to use a lower current setting, just push it once. Now we're on level one. If you're going to be using a very thin strip, you want to use level one. This unit will spot weld up to 0.14 millimeters, which is good enough for most projects. And if you push the button again, once, you can see now we're on level two, three, four. So now if I leave it on level two, and you push it fast twice, now you're back to the battery, you push it once quick, and now it's doing this. You can see it alternating between the state of charge and level two. When the probes are plugged in, and when the probes make contact with the strip, within a second and a half, this is going to know to deliver the high current pulse to make that spot weld happen. It's fully automatic. So let me push this twice. Now back to there. And I can go back to level four if I want. Push it twice. And I can push it and hold it to turn it off. Now let's take a look at the cables that are included. And you can see this is gold plated right here. The wire that's used for the probe is a 10 gauge stranded 200 C rated insulation. You can see the end right over here. Another gold plated connector plugs into the unit. And if we take a very close look over here, you have this very thick copper tube. And inside that copper tube is this probe tip. And you can see right over here, where is it? That it's crimped to hold this in position. The entire outer covering of this copper is covered in a clear heat shrink tube. So you don't have to worry about the two probes touching together. If the spot welder is used a lot, you may have to clean the tip. And the best way to do that is using 1000 grit sandpaper or what I use is one of these nail buffers. It's a three-way nail buffer. 
the side here is coarse. You don't want to use that. You want to use number two, which is fairly smooth, and you could just very gently go over that tip to clean it up. Once you clean it up, you should have no more problem making a good spot weld. In order to charge the spot welder, you're going to use the included cable. It goes from the type A to type C. Once it's plugged in, you're going to see a red light come on right inside this little hole right here. When it's fully charged, it's going to turn green. Right here is the 0.1 millimeter tabbing material made out of nickel included with the unit. And you can see right here, not a bad thickness. Keep in mind, the battery spot welder will do up to 0.14, so it's going to be thicker than what you see right here. Of course, using the thicker material, you're going to want to use the higher current setting. Now, if you need to spot weld using material thicker than 0.14, you're going to have to use a more powerful spot welding unit, and I'll include a link in the video description area where you can find those. Now, before I connect all four of these in series side by side, the first thing I want to do is show you the different settings using an 18650 lithium ion cell. The tabbing material you see right here is the one that was included, 0.1 millimeter nickel. The first setting is going to be the lowest. For this demonstration, the unit has been fully charged. Keep in mind that the battery is very weak. When you put it to the number four setting, the spot weld is going to look like a number two setting. So if you really need to perform a good spot weld on thicker material, make sure the battery inside the unit is fully charged. And as you can see, once the contact was made, about one and a half seconds later, the pulse was delivered to perform the spot weld. When the cells are spot welded, you wanna make sure you do it two or three times, because if you only do it once, you're not going to be able to deliver the amount of current that you need into that metal strip because the current's going to be flowing through just those tiny little spot welds, in this case, only two. So I would do it two to three times, and then you should be just fine. Now the unit is set for level two, and as you can see, level two, the spot weld, it looks a little bit larger in diameter, and it goes a little bit deeper. Now let's try level three. You can see that that spot weld is a little larger in diameter than the level two. And lastly, we're gonna do number four, and I'm going to have to go back to the top because I didn't leave myself enough room. And right there is level four. It's the biggest spot weld of all, and it goes the deepest. If you try pulling that tab off of the cell, it will not pull off. Let me take these cells, line them up the way they're supposed to go, and I'll come right back, and we'll spot weld each one together. Okay, everything is lined up. I trimmed off the tabs that I didn't need, and then I folded the existing tab into the correct position on the adjacent cell. I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to be using a level three. So I'm going to try and do this without blocking the camera. Let's do this one right here first. I'm going to touch one probe just to get it in position. You don't have to push hard, moderate pressure. And let's go at an angle right there. Perfect. Let's do it again over here. Good, and we'll do one more over here. And that is beautiful. Let me flip it around, do the opposite side. The tip should be pointing straight down. Let's do it again over here. And I could do another one over here. Perfect. That's all together. Let's push the side first. And over here. Beautiful. The only thing I would have to do now is solder to between these two batteries, here, there, over here, and over here to connect up the battery management system. And if you don't know how to do that, refer to my other video. Right at the end of this video, you can click on the link. It'll bring you right there. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thanks for watching.